You're watching Channel 7. Welcome back to even more Daily Rundown with me, Dan Morfitt, and Stephen Lindsay and Cal Doughty. Fresh divisions are emerging within the grand old party, the GOP US Republicans, over its presidential candidate, Donald J. Trump. A senior Republican Party activist told the BBC that she thought Mr. Trump was psychologically unbalanced. Presidential nominee psychologically unbalanced. In the latest controversy, Mr. Trump has refused to support two senior figures in his own party. Trump said he was just not quite there yet when asked if he would endorse the House Speaker Paul Ryan and Senator John McCain, who are up for re-election. Both men have publicly criticised him. Now, Mr. Trump's campaign has been marked by a series of controversial statements. So, is this the end for Trump or just the beginning of a new nightmare? with thatched blonde hair. It's, it's definitely not the end. I th this man, for some reason, can have every single week more controversies than any election campaign over the entirety of it and still keep on going. It's, it's remarkable. And in terms of talking about him being mentally unhinged, it's interesting. Does um, that give him a way out? If we say I, he's <laughs> mentally unhinged, it gives uh, an excuse to some of his uh, behaviour. I don't, I don't, do you mean a way out as in a, a way, it excuses a way excuses him. Uh, excuse, yeah, sorry, yeah. Um, yeah, possibly, but but I think one of the key things with, with, uh, with this uh, is that these sorts of spats, these disagreements in the Republican Party are in the, uh, you know, the hierarchy of the Republican Party is actually in many ways irrelevant and at best and at worst actually adds to his whole thing which is change new broom don't follow the party line anti-establishment anti you would not you would not believe he could be standing as anti-establishment but he is mm. anti-politics as you say all that anti nonsense yeah. um, is this, just emboldened the, the, him, the, yeah. this, is, this is great for him because the voters actually are likely an, an element of them maybe the majority of his supporters are likely to say that's actually proving what he's saying yeah. they're all out to get him and actually he's our man and they actually become even more protective of him do you think, in a way. Do you think to some extent Donald Trump's not running now as the Republican candidate? Correct. Donald J. Trump is running as the Donald Trump candidate. Absolutely. He always has been, though. He absolutely yeah. always has been. He, Do you he, think that's always been part of his game, then? Definitely. I mean, I'm not even... I'm not positive he definitely wants the job. I think he wants to win because that's how he's always acted, but I'm not sure if he wants the job because he doesn't... He clearly doesn't understand it, but he knows he doesn't understand it. And it's, and it's dangerous. And it's annoying that this is, tends to be the focus with him. And like, oh, let's look at what's going on with the Republican Party as a whole. Who isn't supporting him? Who is supporting him? And that's, that very much fits in with his, with his narrative. But if you look at like, beyond the surface, you've got things where he went to a security meeting. And in that security meeting, he asked three times, each time being given the same answer, why <laughs> we couldn't use nuclear weapons. <laughs> So he's mm. fully misunderstanding the idea of what nuclear weapons are as a deterrence is for. Oh. He just wants to use them. On that point, there's a really strange parallel that you can take here between Donald Trump yeah. and Jeremy Corbyn. <laughs> because Jeremy Corbyn's own parliamentary party do not support him. He's got more people with yep. uh, MPs with knives out against him, but he's going to towns and cities across the country and thousands of people are turning up to rally in support for him. They've already got him on the ballots for the Labour leadership election. Again, they're not really caring about the Labour Party now, no. but the cult of it's, Jeremy. It's, it's almost cult of Jeremy, you're right. And there is, it's a really good comparison, that. It is, yeah. The, 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 the difference, though, I think, is that um, when it comes to an election, who knows, but the polls would seem to indicate, although the polls have been getting things wrong lately, but I would guess... What do I know? But I would guess if there was a general election next week, Jeremy Corbyn has got no chance of being becoming Prime Minister. If the presidential election took place next week, Trump has got a good chance. And that's the difference. You're quite right in the comparison of Corbyn almost being able to, you know, behave the, 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 the way he behaves and garner support. 
irrespective of civil war within the parliamentary mm. Labour Party, and that's similar to the sort of and the, they're all against me thing of Trump in the Republican Party, as you rightly say. But I think the difference is when you then translate it to general public support, the polls in both countries are giving completely different answers. Yep. And therefore they are quite different at the yeah. end of the day because that's what actually then matters. Do you think it's because of a case of like a like a media message? Like with Corbyn, all the, all the messages tends to be bringing, bringing him down. But with Trump, they're using their own for their own interest where it builds him up in a way. Like once again, they're also not focusing on the other things that she does, which is um, there was a case last night where there was a baby screaming during his during his speech, just like his baby. And at first he was like, I love babies, it's fine, don't worry, I love babies. But then later in the speech he's like, Actually, I was kidding. Get that baby out of here. And there's also a fantastic picture of Donald Trump being like the masses and eating fried chicken. Yeah. Mm. On a private plane with a knife <laughs> yeah, and fork. Exactly. <laughs> Nobody eats fried chicken with a knife and fork. Stop it. That's wrong. <laughs> he eats pizza with a knife and fork yeah. as well. Yeah. He calls himself a New Yorker. Um, I think we're possibly the only television show in the whole of the UK that I've probably done a comparison between <laughs> Trump and Corbyn. As this rumbles on, because we'll probably get an American president before we get a new Labour leader. No, that's uh, probably true. We'll keep making those comparisons here on the Daily Rundown. <laughs> right, let's look at our last story for the time being. Students starting university courses in England will no longer be able to apply for grants towards their living costs. Under changes that came into effect on Monday, grants from students from low-income homes are going to be replaced by loans. Previously, students from families with annual incomes of £25,000 or less received a grant of £3,387. The National Union of Students said that this move was disgraceful and meant that poorer students would be saddled with a lifetime of debt. The switch was announced in 2015 by George Osborne. Mr Osborne said that there was a basic unfairness in asking taxpayers to fund grants for people who are likely to earn a lot more than them. But some say that the move punishes poorer students simply for being poor. So is education once again only for the richest? Yes, is the short answer. Yeah. Um, I think the, uh, the, the evidence now is that the idea that going to university means that you significantly out earn those that didn't is, is actually not the case. It's a fallacy. Absolutely. It is yeah. a fallacy. Um, and that's for many, many reasons to do with changes in the structure of the, uh, the, the, the sort of labour market, changes in the numbers of people that go to university, etc. Et economic conditions generally, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Uh, so the first thing I think to say is the idea of the, the taxpayer shouldn't subsidise someone going to uni because they're going to earn more I don't think it's actually true. And the, se the second thing which I think is actually more important from a personal point of view, uh, certainly for me, you know, I, I went to university at a time when you could get a grant, not a loan, but a grant. And I was surrounded at university by people who didn't get grants because they didn't need them. Mm. And that was fine, absolutely fine. Now, to say that, the, you're, 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 you, you, you need to take a loan and in some way it's not going to stop relatively poorer people going to uni is just has got to be absolute nonsense. It's another barrier being put up as if there aren't enough barriers it's to get in fit, in the first place. Way, yeah. It's another thing to put people, relatively poor people off and it's just an absolute disgrace. Absolutely, and it's frustrating because he, um, in back in 2015 when he introduced this, he shut down the argument which could make this sort of thing be stopped straight away by using the whole taxpayers' money argument, which, as we know, with the case of like immigration or, or people on job benefits and those, those sort of things, gets people riled up very quickly. It's mm. like, oh, you're paying for these people to do something which you're not necessarily doing yourself, like they're getting something for free. And that, that basically shuts down any argument because no one's going to really fight for it if they think that they're, they're having to spend their own but money for it. it's vilifying students. Exactly. Then. Of course it is. Yeah. Is it not just the fault of this government and the previous coalition government, but also, say, Tony Blair's government, who first brought in those student loans yeah. and yeah. also came up with this magical figure where he wanted 50% of the nation to go to university, yeah. uh, irrespective of whether they needed to or not, yes. and, and I think I think that is that that is part of it. Personally, um, the 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 I you know everyone 
with, with, with any uh, uh, evidence as regards development of people knows that education is absolutely key. But to then take that general point to a position of university, unless you've gone to uni, mm. you've not done the most you should have done in terms yeah. of education, is complete and utter nonsense. Absolutely. There's a raft of people who are better, and it's beginning to change a little bit now with the increase in the number of apprenticeship schemes and support for apprenticeship schemes that now exist, yeah. to be fair. But that there's a raft of people, they shouldn't be going to university, they should be doing apprenticeship schemes and earning some money while they're doing it, because actually, they're better doing that from something their own vocational point of view. And something Absolutely. that they're great at, rather than being told, you have to go to university because that's the way it is. Correct. Yeah, absolutely, and that, that seems to be the trouble right now, and that everyone feels the need to go to university, and so it's 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 almost a money making scheme in a way. Like if they do these loans, they're going to get this money back with, well, as soon with as some it interest as well. Becomes a loan from a grant. You become yeah. you you don't become a student anymore. You become a customer. Absolutely, no, that's correct. And I think that's um, it's a way a lot of um, so they've got everyone wanting to go to uni. They take away these grants, and suddenly, they're, they're, everyone wants to go to uni. Is essentially their customer. They're going to be making money from them. Mm. I think we've just hit the nail on the head. Right, that's all we have time for in this part of the show. But we'll be back next with news of a charity helping schools and colleges in Africa. The Daily Rundown returns in a couple of minutes' time. So keep it on. That's Manchester on Channel Seven.